start for me, please. Thank you. Um, and, uh, and the recording will then be shared together with all the presentation through the Covenant of Mayors uh, channels. Uh, also, I very much encourage you to take left the floor during the 20 minutes of Q&A session that we will have at the end. Uh, I suspect that all of you are already familiar with the, the with this conference platform. This is the Zoom platform. But if you have experience uh, are experiencing any issues about Zoom, please let us know. Uh, okay, and uh, just to keep it short, uh, to give you a quick introduction of our estimated speakers and panelists that we later discuss quite detailed aspect of energy communities. I am Andra Carosi from the Covenant of Mayors Office, uh, today from Berlin, and I have to, the pleasure to moderate this webinar. Online with me, uh, my colleague Marie Klesult from Climate Alliance, from, from Climate Alliance. She's in personally involved in the Light Back On project, and Marie will support us in the background for this webinar. The first panelist is uh, Mr. Federico Norris, uh, the, the coordinator of the Life Back On project, and Federico will present the, the, the project and the concept of the, the, the Life Back On supporting mechanisms to deploy energy communities. Then we will have a really inspiring uh, European policy session with, uh, with, uh, with the involvement of Achille Annoset from DG Energy, DG Ener, who will present the, the, the framework for the energy communities in the European legislation. And then Anna Francis from the European Repository, um, uh, Energy Community uh, Repository, sorry, who will present the, 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 the support offered to local authorities by the Energy Community Repository. Uh, and then uh, in the following session, uh, we, we will see the, the variety of national energy community framework through uh, different lens. So from the demos areas of the Life Back Home project represented by, by several organizations already involved in the Covenant of Mayors, namely they are uh, the Sofia Energy Agency with Nadia Nikolova from Bulgaria, Covenant supporter in Bulgaria. Then we have Eric Egelskier Lauritsen, sorry Eric if I was wrong uh, pronouncing your name, from the city of Copenhagen, again here, signatory of the Covenant of Mayors. And the, 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 the last good experience will be the one of uh, presented by Mauro Stinelling, representing the activities that the, the, the province of Avila in Spain uh, will implement in uh, three municipal, small municipalities, signatories of the Covenant. During the last part of the webinar, uh, you will have the, the possibility to, to ask questions or share inputs. So again, uh, I invite you all to put your questions or comments in the chat box. Uh, now we can start with the presentation and without further ado, uh, Federico, please, the floor is yours. Uh, and we will look forward to hearing about the Life Back On project and what is foreseen to boost the development of energy communities at the local level. Federico, please. You can share your presentation. Okay. Do you, do you see the screen? Do you see the presentation, Mark? Very well, thank you. Okay. Uh, so thank you uh, for the introduction, Andre, and everybody to join today. My name is uh, Federico Norris, uh, and I will present uh, from R2M Solution, and I will present the Life Back On project that uh, uh, aims to deliver support mechanisms for public authorities in the role of enabling energy communities. Uh, the project started in November and will last uh, for uh, three years, so we have a uh, and still a few, um, uh, some work to be done. Uh, the team is composed of uh, eight entities. I, R2M, which is the coordinator of the project, as well as we work mainly on technical support for the technical assistant offices and on the one-stop uh, shop platform. Some of this concept will be more clear during the rest of the presentation. Then we have an all that works on more on capacity building and the training approach. We global that develop the the cookbook for the technical assistant office, and then we have uh, three uh, municipalities or three uh, you know uh, super public authorities in in Avila, uh, Spain, Copenhagen, Denmark, and Sofia, Bulgaria, 
and of course we have the we are very lucky to have a climate alliance uh, and the connection through the network of uh, municipality through the covenant of mayor and, um, and lastly we have the Tampere university that provides some support on capacity building the the overall idea of life beacon is basically to um, equip uh, public authorities with different uh, uh, support mechanisms to um, facilitate their role in enabler of energy communities. So the idea is that a lot of citizens are going and will be going to us to the, the public authorities, to the municipality or, or, or similar for uh, help and support in launching and operating energy communities. And so the, the public authorities and the public have a key role in here. And so we want to support them. And how we do that, we do that through three main pillars. One, um, we develop a, what we call a cookbook, uh, uh, basically a, a set of, of guidelines or a methodology and tools to support what we call a technical assistant office. So um, an office where the public can go and ask questions and get support. We deliver capacity building to the public authority staff uh, because since they will have a uh, they will need to be informed to be able to deliver the support. And then we package all of these into a platform, a one-stop shop platform that has elements related to, to knowledge, to training and to uh, uh, opportunities or matchmaking. And I will show you in a second. Uh, we have very ambitious targets, as you can see here, in terms of in investment that we can mobilize or number of citizens that we engage or energy communities that we uh, we launch in these three demonstration areas, uh, Avila, Copenhagen and, and Sofia. But also we want to replicate this in as many um, additional uh, municipalities as possible. Uh, through um, you know through support that we can give uh, especially through the covenant of mayor uh, but also dedicated support to individual energy communities through call for replication that we will launch uh, next year uh, so here you can see a little bit the, the overall concept but very schematic we have three the, the same three pillars which is the top left is the the capacity building and learning labs that we do. The bottom left is the one-stop shop platform that is composed of uh, the knowledge hub, uh, where we have uh, tools, information, guidelines. We have the training hub, where we do more webinars, capacity building, video, uh, and uh, e-learning platform. And then the opportunity hub, where we have a marketplace uh, and as well as a matchmaking uh, component. And then uh, for the technical assistance, basically we deliver uh, tools and, and all the different support that uh, can uh, support the job of the technical assistant office. If we go through this first one, uh, like I said before, uh, we envision that municipalities have a key role and, and they can deliver support to the citizens through this technical assistant office. And the support can be uh, can cover six main um, uh, aspects: uh, technical support, financial and operational support, particip participatory process, regulatory support, legal support, and quality control, uh, monitoring, and evaluation. And so, we 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 develop uh, methodology and, and supporting elements such as uh, templates, uh, guidelines, or tools for each of these. Um, at the beginning of uh, the process, uh, we um, we ask uh, the the potential participants uh, uh, through a checklist, through a survey, some some questions to understand what they are in the process. As you can see here, we structure the in four different phases, which are uh, initiation, design, implementation, and operation. And for each of these, there are a series of of steps that needs to be completed. So based on the survey, we understand in which phase and which step they are. And for the, each of these steps, there will be supporting elements that we can provide to them. Uh, a lot of these elements are in the, in the form of, of tools. So we screen a lot of public available tools um, that can be used for, for different purposes, uh, but they are related with the different uh, 
phases and different uh, uh, steps of an energy community. So we screen more than 100 tools that, that we will be made available through the one-stop shop uh, platform. And so very like this is a little bit. So at the beginning, there is a checklist or a survey. We classify the where the, the person, the responder is in the journey uh, in terms of the different phases that they can be and the different steps. And for each of these steps, uh, we're either they already completed, or if they haven't completed, we suggest some tools or some templates or some documents they can use to complete uh, those steps. And then we can also generate a progress report to understand where they really are. And that this progress report can be used for, uh, you know, for acquiring additional funding or to, to comply with regulation or to get, uh, you know, uh, approval or accreditation from the energy agency or from the regulator. So to understand a little bit, so when shifting from the technical assistant office to the capacity building, we did a survey to understand the needs of the uh, public authority staff. So we completed surveys and interview across Europe with the focus mainly in our three demonstration area, but we also had a lot of additional uh, responses from other, uh, from other area. And we saw that, uh, and basically we characterize where they are actually uh, asking to get uh, training on on which topics. And so mainly uh, people ask to get uh, support on uh, management and administration or assessment and monitoring or on regulatory support or on best practices. Um, of course, this changes by, by the specific uh, uh, context and, and 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 municipality they might have specific need but uh, this is uh, the results of the survey that uh, uh, will be made available through our social media channels and our website um, and then based on this information this information was very useful for us to understand what the, the actually the the target or our uh, capacity building which is the public authority uh, staff needs help on and so based on this information we are packaging different uh, capacity building products they are basically a series of eight videos interactive uh, webinars on different topics we are completing workshops in the three demonstration areas uh, that we mentioned before and then in the next few months uh, we will have a, a open debate and scale up challenge to uh, to to share information and then replicate these initiatives and this capacity building. The last pillar, as I mentioned before, is the one stop shop platform that uh, uh, basically has a knowledge hub that takes the information from the technical assistant office and the technical assistant cookbook. So in terms of of, of uh, guidelines or tools and knowledge that can be used in different stages of the process. The training hub that takes the information on the capacity building. So through training modules, video, and e-learning platform, basically. And then lastly, we have an opportunity hub that is structured in two sub-pillars. One is a marketplace uh, where the different uh, uh, technology and service provider can basically advertise themselves and say, okay, this is what I can offer for to an energy community. Uh, and, and as well, I don't know what happened. Um, and as well to potential seekers that can ask for a different, uh, uh, mm, different uh, support that they can ask um, uh, to the public and to and also to the private companies. And then we have a matchmaking platform that basically uh, try to match demand and offer and create a collaboration between these two, uh, this, the, the demand and offer exactly. So if we look at uh, how the one-stop shop platform using a little bit uh, the survey that we mentioned before for the technical assistant office, we do a characterization, a characterization uh, of the uh, of the user, uh, so to understand uh, the type, the needs, and the step of this user. So based on this information, we can point the user to different uh, uh, sections of the one-stop shop platform. So for instance, we can say, well, you could uh, look at the guideline um, uh, X and Y in the knowledge shop uh, because 
they will help you with this step, or you can look use this tool in the knowledge hub that can help you with this other step. And the similar for the training hub, we suggest in the, okay, you might want to look at this video, you might want to look at this um, workshop uh, recordings that we have that can help you clarify some aspects that we understand you, uh, need, you need support. And similar for additional external support in the terms of, okay, if you're looking for legal advice, here the list of legal advice or legal experts in your area that can support you, okay? We are demonstrating all of these uh, three uh, aspects in, in three demonstration areas. The idea is to deploy a uh, train the trainer approach. So we do that by uh, basically uh, adapting uh, what we're doing here in terms of technical assistant office and capacity building and the one-stop shop platform to the specific need. And since we want to really promote the train the trainer approach, the idea is that we train one uh, major institution in the area, either in the case of Avila is the province, in the case of Copenhagen, uh, Sofia is the individual municipality, but uh, is the capital of the country. So we have already this uh, following effect uh, from the rest of the, the cities in the country. And so then with the idea that then they can deliver the training and the capacity building to the other authorities in the area. We will hear more about Avila, Copenhagen, and Sofia in the rest of the webinar. Uh, of course, we don't want to just do this for these three uh, public authorities. We want to do that to uh, what we're doing here is to be replicated to as many municipalities, public authorities, energy agency. Uh, we want to leverage the uh, covenant to mayor and uh, a very powerful network. And um, we want to replicate uh, to the idea is to replicate this to uh, uh, deliver a capacity building to at least uh, 30 municipalities. And then we will have a call for replication where we can deliver some technical assistance and, um, and uh, one stop shop platform to at least uh, 15 uh, projects. And adapting the one stop shop platform that is, you know, uh, at the beginning is, uh, is generic and, and can be adapted to the specific context, to the specific needs, and especially for the matchmaking uh, platform, you will have a local uh, offer and demand. And lastly, uh, you know, we just started. We have a very ambitious program. We are doing a, a very good job so far, I think. Uh, but, you know, there will be a lot more information coming up in the next uh, months and couple of years. So I invite you all to um, follow us in the different uh, communication and dissemination channels in, in LinkedIn, in Twitter. We have a, a website. The brochure of the project is already available. We will have a six month, uh, six monthly newsletter. Uh, the first one is coming up in a, in a, um, in a few weeks. And then we will have a dedicated uh, section of the Climate Alliance International Conference in Modena in uh, in November, I believe. And um, and here you can also see my personal uh, contact details in case you want to get in touch with the with the rest of the team. So thank you for your attention, and I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the webinar. Fantastic, fantastic! Thank you, Federico. I think uh, this was a great uh, overview of the project. Anyway, before continuing to talk uh, about the specific activities of Life Balcon, we are now going up to, to the European dimension. So it is my great privilege to give it the floor to Achille from DG Ener to share an overview of the framework for energy communities in the European leg legislation. So Achille, please, if you want to share your presentation, the floor is yours. Yes, it's my great uh, privilege to be here as well and, and speak to you all, but also uh, listen um, to what the Life Beacon uh, project is, is, is bringing, which is an important implementation of, of uh, the provisions for um, renewable energy communities and, of course, very useful for the citizen energy communities as well. So that's uh, first off. Now let me share my screen or at least attempt to. Um, ba -ba -bum. Let's see, window up. Voila. And then... I will go to my presentation. If all is well, you will see my presentation now. Um, so I've been so, asked... Uh, sorry, we, I, I can see only my really bad face. So <laughs> we should change the, the window. Okay. Um, 
Let's see if I can fix that. Voila, this should solve the issue. Yep, perfect. All right, so uh, I've been asked to, to give you a, a bit of a reminder where we are at uh, European level with the, the citizen and renewable energy communities. I'm, I'm sure you're, you're all quite familiar in the meantime with these concepts, but uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't hurt to refresh the minds and also to see um, how this concept is further evolving at the European policy level. Um, so I'm Ashil Hanoset, I'm a policy officer and I'm responsible for consumer empowerment within Unit B1. Uh, that is generally responsible for consumers. Um, I will give you a bit of a background on uh, energy communities, then the clean energy package, then we will look at Repower EU, some of the instruments that we propose there and how they are relevant to the energy communities. Um, I will talk about the initiatives that we have ongoing. And uh, lastly, I will also um, briefly take you through the, the, the recent proposal by the Commission on the Electricity Market Design uh, Reform. So um, first things first, uh, of course, we, we have a, a vision or a strategy with our energy system. And uh, I wanted to give you a, a hint of what that might look like, yeah? more liberalized and competitive, because, for example, you can have multiple suppliers uh, potentially operating on a, on a single connection point in the, in the future. Uh, but also it would be possible for active customers to, to share electricity with each other. Uh, or even market participants to enter into peer-to-peer -peer trading arrangements through online platforms. So there will be a multitude of sources of energy, supply sources of energy, and thus more uh, competition within the market that should have knock-on effects on the competitiveness of the, of the price and the afford affordability thereof. Uh, it will be more digitalized. Digitalization is a key a driver for innovation. Um, smart meter rollout, that's where it all starts. And then we start building on access to data, to consumption data uh, that is accessible to the consumer itself, him, him or herself, to regulate uh, consumption behavior, but also accessible to third parties that then can provide services based on uh, the consumption data in, in correspondence with, with system needs, whether that is congestion management, uh, frequency control at, at, at distribution system level or balancing services at transmission system level. Uh, okay, will... sorry for interrupting you, yeah. but we cannot see the presentation running. We still see the, the, the first slide. Maybe oh, there that, is a... That's a pity, sorry. yeah. So there's a lack. Um, all right. So let me try to fix it because there's no real issue from my end. Um, maybe if I just close it and I take you through it like yeah, this. No, 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 no. We see the slide number two. Okay, but you don't see okay. my full screen, right? No, we don't see your full screen, but it's visible. Right. So, yeah. All right. Um, so more, uh, don't get distracted by the following <laughs> slides. Uh, you can already see, I'd say. But okay, more decentralized consumer centered. This is why we're here now. Uh, uh, local authorities have a key role to play in facilitating uh, the emergence of energy communities uh, in order to also um, decrease the or, or take away some of the difficulties that they face in terms of lack of, of technical and uh, resources, but also financial ones. Uh, it will be more integrated, so heat and, and electricity, uh, mainly uh, the electrification of heat, but also the combination with uh, biogas, for example, to have a base load supply of, um, of energy, whether it's heat or electricity within uh, the local community. And of course, it will be uh, decarbonized. Now, just showing you some examples um, of energy communities. Uh, these are older ones. I have two from, from Germany. Um, so we have Hinderlang, where there's a hydropower plant. Um, we have uh, in Denmark, we have a biogas plant. And in Shona, we have uh, several wind mills and, and, and solar PV uh, installed within a local uh, rural community. Um, most of the time, uh, we see that there's uh, citizen involvement within these energy communities. Uh, sometimes they're also the initiators, uh, but at times it can also consist out of farmers or it can be a, a, a cooperative of municipalities with uh, certain consultation mechanisms in place for citizens. Now, if we look at the clean energy package, um, we have two concepts that um, attempted to reflect the reality of the diversity of energy community initiatives that, that are already out there in 
in the member states while also allowing for a, a certain uh, room for innovation uh, as we go forward and experiment with, with these concepts. So the citizen energy community is in the electricity market directive and the renewable energy community is in the renewables directive. What they both have in common, uh, first off, is that uh, they have this orientation towards providing benefits for the local area or for the community, rather than uh, making profits first. Uh, of course, they can still make profits. Uh, it's just not their primary purpose. Um, what else do they have in common? Well, they need to be organized through a legal entity. Participation needs to be open and voluntary. And um, the primary purpose I already highlighted. The differences between the two concepts is, is quite significant, especially, I think, for the, for the purpose of this, this discussion uh, here today. So for the citizen energy communities, I already mentioned, it, they, they allow for a little bit more uh, flexibility and innovation also in terms of actor configuration. So any entity may participate, and that's quite significant in comparison to the renewable energy communities, because there it's, it's limited to local authorities, SMEs, and natural persons. Um, any entity for the citizen energy communities means that also municipal companies that have a majority share in an enterprise can participate, but also NGOs, associations and that would not qualify as enterprises and regional authorities. Um, in terms of effective control, everything is closed down to a set of actors that, uh, that is equally pre true for the renewable energy communities and the citizen energy communities. So you see it's confined to natural persons, local authorities, or small enterprises for the citizen energy communities. For the renewable energy communities, there's a bit more flexibility for the enterprises. A medium-sized enterprise can be in effective control. However, there's the requirement of proximity, which is quite a significant one. Of course, we want to facilitate public acceptance uh, through these concepts, especially the renewable energy communities. And thus, this proximity is key that, to, to ensure that those that are impacted by projects are also benefiting uh, from these projects. Um, last but not least, the autonomy requirement that is only there for renewable energy communities requires a balance of interest, limiting the possibility for one single actor, like a local authority, to be in control of the initiative. This requirement is not present for the citizen energy communities, and thus it would be possible for a single actor that is eligible, so either natural person, local authorities, or small art enterprises, to be in the lead and in control of these initiatives. Um, if we look at the enabling framework, um, we have a set of privileges, and, and one of those privileges I already mentioned is the regulatory and capacity building support to public authorities. And here we, we, we see a, a very good uh, first uh, implementation uh, possibility and, and materialization of this provision through, through the, the, the live backend uh, project. Um, so that's very good to see. But there are also other privileges that are being assigned to the renewable energy community, such as access to financial instruments and information, which is also facilitated through this platform, customized support schemes, and which is more of a, a competence of the national uh, government and the removal of uh, unjustified um, barriers, as well as the assessment thereof, of course. Um, what they both have in common is a general facilitating uh, framework that allows for the market integration of both citizen and renewable energy communities. So here we have all of these more, um, let's say, uh, abstract uh, rights and responsibilities, whether they're direct or indirect, that call for non-discriminatory, proportionate, fair procedures, taking into account the specificities of these entities. Now, um, clean energy package is there. It's fully adopted. It's, it has entered into force. Transposition date has also passed. So uh, we see that, that, that quite a few member states have already put an enabling framework in place. And this enabling framework is now uh, beginning to have its effects also on the ground uh, where, where these enabling frameworks have, have been designed effectively. Um, of course, the Commission is engaged in a transposition check of these provisions. Uh, at this stage, however, I'm not, I'm not uh, in a position to disclose any further information on this. Um, of course, uh, things change uh, since the adoption of the clean energy package. And I think the most significant change um, is, is, is the energy uh, crisis. Uh, and prior to that, 
of course, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. And all of that had an impact on our on our economies, uh, and including uh, and in particular even for the for the crisis related to the Ukraine uh, Russia conflict um, on on the energy sector. Um, and the Commission subsequently also uh, decided to take uh, subsequent action in order to ensure that we uh, continue to meet our our, our objectives uh, to to mitigate climate change. Uh, while also preserving affordability and competitiveness within our energy uh, markets. Oh, I created a new slide. Um, so we have key repower EU policy instruments uh, in this regard. Uh, we have the EU safe energy communication, which is uh, a game changer in a sense that it, it focused on the, the mass deployment on, of, um, of uh, heat pumps. Uh, the EU solar strategy, which aims to increase capacity up to 600 gigawatt by 2030 with a rollout of solar energy. Uh, the electricity market design, on which I will come back later. The biomethane action plan, which uh, reflects to some extent also in the proposed gas market directive, uh, not only looking at electrification of heat, uh, but also looking at um, uh, decarbonizing uh, gas supply. Uh, by, by investing in biogas plants and upgrading uh, biogas to biomethane and making use of existing gas networks. And then, of course, the permitting uh, recommendation, which has um, further uh, given legal, legal shape in, in, the renewable, in the review of the Renewable Energy uh, Directive with the go-to areas. Uh, I, I, probably you are familiar with this concept by now. Um, zoom in EU solar strategy. We have some some points there for the energy communities. Uh, by 2024, we will set up an energy communities facility. We will provide cascade funding um, in order for uh, the energy community to bridge, um, let's say, the, the the point between pre-development and actual development and investment in equipment of of to realize uh, renewable energy uh, projects. So this can be used, uh, these, these grants can be used to, to procure services, uh, legal advice, for example, uh, in order to set up your legal entity or to uh, kind of map out uh, which type of permits you need to, 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 to get and, and, and how to navigate the procedures. Um, we, will, uh, we have this uh, policy objective as well, where we want to see one renewable-based energy community in every municipality. That includes renewable energy communities and citizen energy communities to the extent they're renewables-based, uh, with a population higher than 10,000 by 2025, which is very ambitious. But uh, thanks to projects like Live Beacon, we, we come st one step closer to realizing uh, this, this, uh, this goal. Um, and then last but not least, in an urban context, of course, is the mandatory installation of roofs of uh, solar energy uh, for public buildings, but also new residential buildings. And here, I, 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 I think there's great potential for energy communities and, and local authorities to cooperate through public uh, procurement uh, procedures, um, but also for local authorities themselves uh, to set up energy sharing projects outside of energy communities. Um, here I give you a bit of uh, an overview of, of the actions that we included in the solar strategy uh, that we recommended to member states to take. Uh, I'm not going to go through them one by one, but I highlighted the one-stop shops as, as they are quite relevant. And again, um, we, we are not necessarily restricting these one-stop shops to the national level. Uh, ideally, they will come at, at multiple levels. Um, of, of governance, uh, and, and I think the local level where the action actually happens uh, might actually might be the, the most appropriate one. Um, if we look at the EU initiatives, uh, we have two of them running currently. So the, the European Commission also, um, uh, thanks to the, the, the Parliament uh, initiative, also um, started providing technical assistance to energy communities, uh, giving the possibility. Um, so basically, these both contracts are, are set up to, to provide this technical assistance, the rural energy communities to rural communities, the repository to urban communities, to the extent this distinction uh, makes sense. Um, what it means is that both contracts, they have local experts within the different member states that have um, already ex experience and expertise in setting up renewable energy projects. 
and uh, they are helping uh, emerging initiatives um, with with their expertise uh, to to go to the next stage of of developing their project um, and which is the development stage and the implementation of the project itself. Um, we see that the, the, the initiatives that have applied and that have been selected for technical assistance are at different stages of development. Sometimes they're at the stage of awareness raising, communi organizing communication campaigns in order to get members uh, jo to join their, their initiatives. At times they are um, setting up a legal entity and trying to see what are the, 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 the benefits with, with choosing different legal forms. Uh, sometimes they're already further progressed, they have their legal entity, they have their members um, ready. Uh, however, they are still looking for financing opportunities or they're still trying to figure out um, how to design their business and investment plan. And for this, they can provide, they can uh, access uh, assistance from these uh, two initiatives. So both the repository and the advisory hub. The repository has some additional components to it. Um, so it's also looking at key uh, barriers and action drivers um, to support the development of energy communities. Um, and it's also conducting an impact assessment to see to what extent energy communities are actually delivering on, on the benefits that we, we associate them uh, quite often with based on, on the few examples that we have of very successful Initiatives. So this is an important deliverable, I think, to to qu start quantifying these these benefits and 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 uh, for for policymakers to also understand what these energy communities can serve for um, in their in their political campaign or or strategy. Um, and depending on which benefits you want them to deliver on, you can of course also adjust the tools, uh, the design of the concept, but also the tools uh, with with which you, you support these initiatives. Um, last but certainly not least, the reform of the electricity market design, the COM proposal on energy sharing. Um, I think it's it's quite a promising one for, for local authorities. Uh, I already mentioned um, our, our interpretation for the energy communities for local authorities is quite confined to really uh, the public administration, uh, excluding um, at the local level, excluding the regional level, but also um, municipal companies are, are, are left a bit in, in, in the dark in, in, in this sense. Uh, and if they want to share, they need to cooperate through a legal entity that meets all of the criteria of an energy community. Um, with the energy sharing proposal, uh, the Commission uh, took the, the step of disentangling uh, a, social concept organizational form from an innovative activity within the energy market um, opening up the activity of energy sharing to um, active customers in general and not only energy communities and of course active customers can uh, be a multitude of of public players as well uh, what we have seen uh, emerging in, in quite a few member states like uh, Italy, Spain and Greece is that local municipalities, um, they have public schools in the neighborhood and of course they, they, they have a lot of space available so they install the solar PV uh, during the summer everyone goes on holiday and there's not really, uh, and there's a lot of electricity being produced uh, but it's not being uh, self-consumed uh, to a large extent. Um, so they can share that excess electricity with neighboring communities and uh, most ideal implementation, I would say, uh, in order to protect the most vulnerable in our society is a cooperation between local authorities and social housing companies. Uh, so they can set up a legal entity together or they can do it through private agreements uh, to, to set up a sharing arrangement in order to, to implement such, uh, such projects, which we strongly encourage from the Commission side uh, with a provision on accessibility for energy poor and vulnerable customers. Uh, we enable two use cases. Um, basically, energy sharing is, um, uh, is a form of collective self-consumption. Uh, use case one is the sharing of energy generated by a facility that is collectively owned, leased or rented by consumers. Um, you have two scenarios that we distinguish here. Scenario one is you go through what was already there, an energy community that ticks all the, the, the governance and membership criteria. 
um, right? Or you have scenario two and you just have a group of consumers that do not necessarily comply with the energy community definition, um, but they do want to jointly invest, rent or lease renewable energy assets, whether that's through a legal entity or, or um, through private agreements. So, for example, in the port of Amsterdam, you can have a, a group of companies uh, that would be qualified as medium to, to large uh, sizes, uh, size. Um, that set up an energy cooperative and share electricity uh, within a local perimeter with each other. That would be perfectly possible. And the Commission doesn't see why, why uh, such innovation should be, should be hampered. Um, and then, of course, that energy will need to be uh, uh, shared within a certain time interval in order to be qualified as, as um, self-consumption. Then we have a second use case, and this is the sharing of excess energy. I already uh, mentioned it in the in the particular case of local authorities. So a public school with solar PV and excess uh, production cooperating with a, a social housing company. Um, uh, with that, I, I think I took you through the most uh, recent and important developments. Uh, of course, I'm quite keen to, to continue to, to listen in and, and hear uh, your, 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 about your findings, learn about your findings, but also to answer any, any questions you may have for me. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Akil. Akil. I think it was a really great framing and overview of the current situation. And uh, really, if you are involved in the topic of energy communities, I think it's a very exciting time with all these legislation directive revisions coming up. So it would be great to see also in the next few years the developments and how this will impact on the proliferation, let's say, of energy communities in Europe. But now, as we are a bit late, we are moving forward, and uh, from the policy updates, we are uh, skipping now to the to the support offered by the the Energy Commission through the Energy Communities Repository. Uh, I'm, it's a, it's great to have Anna Francis here, and Anna, please, I would like to give the floor to you. You can share your presentation. Thank you. Great, thank you. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, we can hear yeah, you. Great. Excellent. Right. Let's see if I can get the presentation full screen. Still not in full. Yeah, OK. <laughs> OK, one second. Oh, these things are never. We've done it 100 times and they're still. Um, OK. OK, great. It's OK now. You can see it. Okay. Yeah, it's OK. Yeah, thank you. OK, so thank you very much. It's great to be here. And I was really interested to hear uh, particularly about the Life Beacon project, which sounds, sounds like a great initiative to link up with. Um, I'm just going to give a quick overview of the Energy Community Repository. And um, Ashil has already given um, some information about it. So hopefully I can make my, my presentation slightly shorter so that we can save some time. Uh, as as Shiel mentioned, um, there are two initiatives, uh, the Energy Communities Repository, which focuses on urban energy communities and the rural energy community. Rural energy community sorry, Anna, blind. sorry, Anna, I don't, I don't know if, if, if this is only a problem for me, but I cannot hear you well. Maybe you can switch oh. off your video. Maybe this will help. Is that better? It seems a bit better. Yeah, you can go on. Okay. Or no. uh, thank you. Um, yes, two initiatives. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, no, sorry. No, sorry. Uh, it's not working. Maybe I can try to share your presentation. Um, just a moment. Unless that makes a difference. Sorry, Anna. So we lost you. Can okay. you just stop sharing? And I will share the presentation for you. So maybe this will help. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me now, though? Stop. Sh yeah. Thank you. So, can you see it? Uh, yes. C can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, it's a bit better. Just try okay. to talk. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Great. Sorry. Sorry about that. I uh, haven't had any issues recently. It's, yeah. Typical. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So I'm part of the team uh, delivering the energy communities tree. Uh, uh, work for energy cities uh, along and part of the team with Rescue, Federen, and um, others uh, that are delivering this over the next uh, year or so. Um, 
and we work very closely with the team that are coordinating the Rural Energy Community Advisory Hub to make sure that all the, all the communities that applied for technical assistance, for example, um, have the support that they need. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so in terms of our activities, we are, oh, I'm so sorry, I don't know why it's, is it, is the sound still bad? Yeah, it's not uh, perfect, but let's say we can, we can hear you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so in terms of the repository, we are doing, there's three uh, key areas. So policy analysis, uh, mapping and impact assessment of energy communities and technical assistance. And I've been particularly involved in the technical assistance uh, side of things. Next slide, please. That works. Okay, good. <laughs> um, so, as Ashia mentioned, one of the things we've been uh, doing is developing some best practice or good practice uh, case studies. And I know that in the UK, for example, I set up an energy community and learning from others around what uh, what's possible and replicating and adapting different models is just so powerful and so it's just so inspiring and really, really also helps save a lot of time and energy. So I think that's a really, really key area that we're working on together and we hope to publish the first set of best practices uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, we are sharing lots of resources and capacity building materials on the website. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Uh, guidance materials and, as I mentioned, also an analysis of policy uh, frameworks. Next slide, please. Uh, so I definitely recommend, if you haven't already been on it, uh, to go to the Energy Communities website, uh, repository website. Uh, there, there is a long list of the, uh, the main EU projects and initiatives. I think we need to add the Beacon product, project, actually, but we're constantly reviewing, reviewing this and adding more information. So uh, it's a really good list. There is a list of the one-stop shops, uh, and there is a really, really full um, toolbox which has lots of different uh, lots of different resources some of which are focusing on uh, tools that municipalities can use to support energy communities and I'll be mentioning a couple of those uh, in a moment next slide please so in terms of the technical assistance uh, the call or the application uh, the applications are now ended for technical assistance but as Ashil mentioned with the facility opening um, that will be a really great opportunity for those that are interested in setting up new projects and municipalities to to get more more support with that so that's fantastic um, in terms of what we're currently delivering we had lots of applications from all over Europe uh, we are supporting 25 communities with direct technical support uh, using the network of local experts that we have in each country uh, we have 45 communities that are doing online twinning, so learning directly from their peers and finding out what's possible and getting specific tailored support. And then we have 80 communities who will receive support via um, national capacity building workshops, uh, which I'll be talking about in a moment. Uh, and finally, we have six EU-wide uh, capacity building webinars, uh, which again, I'll mention in more detail, but we would love you to participate in any of those. They are both um, uh, both the capacity building workshops and the um, uh, webinars are open to everybody. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so just to give a flavor of um, the applications and where they where we got them from, uh, as you can see, there was a lot of interest from Spain, which is great. Um, we, we had a slightly weighted criteria in that we wanted to really provide support to those countries where energy communities are slightly less developed or where the frameworks have not yet really had a big impact. So uh, we had uh, 14 focus countries. And as you can see, that helped to kind of balance things out a bit. So we had lots of um, lots of applications from Italy, lots from Greece, and also uh, from places like Serbia, which is brilliant. Uh, next one, please. So in terms of uh, municipal, municipal involvement, um, we had really a, a very wide range um, of applications. Um, a lot of, there was a lot of involvement from municipalities um, and some of the applications were actually municipal led. So in Czech Republic, for example, there was a PV and heat pump project in Greece. Uh, there was a, they were looking at a hydro project in Portugal, setting up a climate action expertise center to set up an energy community in partnership with the municipality. In Germany, uh, the municipality was helping select sites for solar. And in Cyprus, we had an application from a municipality that wants to set up the first energy community. 
Um, so it was really, really great to see that the energy community is really involving, or municipalities are taking the lead in many cases, and in other cases, the, a lot, the most of the energy communities are working in partnership with the with the municipalities to develop their projects, and that's really something that's yeah very, very powerful. Uh, approach. And in terms of the uh, Rural Energy Communities Advisory Hub, they also had that as part of their criteria. When you applied, you had to have a letter of support from the local authority. Okay, next slide, please. Um, so what we found was um, the majority of the applications were from um, communities right at the initial stages. Um, and so the topics that they were interested in you can see on this slide so it's unsurprising really but a lot of them were interested in the setup of the legal structure and and the administration how to set up a participative governance structure how to set up the, their first community investment campaigns how to develop their financing concepts and really and finding uh, inspiring examples of local and national best practice next slide please so to meet those needs um we are uh, just currently organizing um, a range of webinars and in june i really invite you to to join us um, we will be looking at expanding city to citizen collaboration in energy communities so that's very very relevant for municipalities uh, and the other subjects that i mentioned um, will be covered in the following month so in july the first steps as an energy community in september it's looking at legislative frameworks but um, building on the work we've been doing the policy analysis uh, and other uh, and others. <laughs> uh, in September, we have um, we're looking at uh, how to set up a community uh, one energy one stop shop. In October, we have the business case, and in November, how to set up your first community investment campaign. Thank you. Next slide. In terms of the capacity building workshops, as I mentioned, we had these focus countries, and so the capacity building workshops are primarily taking place in those focus countries. And if, if you're based in any of those countries or have contacts that are, please do get in touch and invite them to these sessions. It's a one day workshop online um, with lots and lots of information about what's possible, best practice of linking up uh, municipalities and energy communities to set up these, these excellent projects. Next one, please. And then just to finish, this is my last slide. Um, so as I mentioned, on the toolbox on the website, there are loads and loads of useful resources. Uh, just wanted to mention, just to highlight a couple. One is the Scale 203050 Municipal Guide, which you may well be aware of already. But if you haven't already seen it, I really recommend having a look because it really takes you through all the different steps from the, from the municipality's point of view, how to, how to start, what's possible, what are the benefits, excellent case studies. So I'd really recommend looking at that. There's also a really useful procurement guide for energy communities uh, written by Rescoop, uh, because I know that procurement can be a key issue for municipalities in terms of procuring services and developing projects with energy communities. So uh, I definitely recommend that one as well. And then I'm also involved in LifeLoop. Um, which is another life program which launched last year and we're also developing a range of tools including for example an asset matchmaking tool whereby municipalities can list their buildings and their land for example and then they can be put in and then energy communities can go on the database and see oh right there's a local town hall there's a school that's interested in putting solar panels community solar on their roofs um so to sort of link it up so hopefully with uh yeah we'll be sharing that on the toolbox definitely and we would love to to link up with Life Beacon as well to see how we can really sort of collaborate more, more on this. Uh, and just to mention again that obviously there's the webinar in June, which we would love you to, to join us for. Um, and do join our mailing list. We'll be sharing all the information about all the upcoming activities and resources uh, through that. Thanks very much. And apologies for the sound issue. <laughs> So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Anna. Wonderful. I think it's great to see really how the technical assistance and the various programs are being expanded. The work you are doing is amazing. I'm sure that local authorities uh, will really find inspiring reference in the materials in the repository, uh, useful to speeding up the, the process to deploy energy communities at the local level. Thanks again, Anna. So finally, we are going now to from the European dimension to, to, to the ground realities and uh, I'm really happy to present the, the life back on the museum actions. So Nadia from Bulgaria, I would love to, could, love to give you the floor and then we look forward to hearing about the, the Bulgarian and Sofia case. Nadia, please, you can share your presentation. Thank you, 
Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, hello, Nadia. Yes, we will see my uh, screen. If you want, I can share for you. If you prefer, you can share your screen. Otherwise, I can do for you. Uh, okay, it is okay, no problem. So please, uh, then you uh, show my okay. presentation. It's okay. Yeah, it's coming. Moment. Yeah, okay. And now we currently see Nadia's screen. Yeah, I think she's. Do you hear? Do you see? No, we see. No, yeah, you have to. Yeah, just open there. Wonderful. You can just put in the um, in the presentation mode. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. So it's my my uh, screen. Okay. So yeah. Know. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, shortly I will acquaint you with the situation in um, the, the energy uh, sector in Bulgaria. In fact, uh, until now, we can say that uh, the energy policy is based on nuclear and coal energy, and uh, the role of uh, renewables was not so much uh, uh, considered important, but it has changed during the years. We can say that the business and the industry are rather active and directly invest in photovoltaics and uh, other renewable installations. But on the other side, groups of citizens in the energy communities, uh, we can say that are rather rare in Bulgaria. There are only uh, several uh, uh, energy communities and there is a lot of um, obstacles, burdens that hinder their development. One of the obstacle is the fact that there is no clear definition and specific uh, legal pro, uh, provisions for that reason and uh, the obstacles are not only regulatory administrative bureaucratic lack of financing of course uh, low awareness of the households and the citizens about the possibilities and the um, uh, uh, profit that the use that they can benefit from the energy communities what we can say that during the last two years, there are a lot of changes that took place. Nevertheless, I can say that we are in a rather politi uh, difficult political situation. During the last two, three years, we had five times uh, parliamentary elections and several service governments. Last uh, parliamentary election was in uh, this month in April, and we are now waiting for a new regular government Formed, which hindered very much uh, the process of transposition of the renewable energy directive and uh, the changes in the, the, the corresponding regulation in renewables and energy efficiency and energy markets so on. Uh, nevertheless, last year there were some um, things that happened in the, in, the of, in the area of the regulation, easing some of the procedures specifically for small business and for um, citizens if they want to install a renewable energy um, uh, uh, photovoltaics on the roofs of their houses and buildings. And uh, uh, this was a very good step with a, a series of changes in several acts. In, so uh, the, the problem is that it, well, it happened only for uh, such installations that were used for own consumption, but not for selling it uh, and uh, connecting it, sharing it with the electric network. And uh, this is an issue that uh, should be solved in the future. Uh, and uh, when we speak about energy communities, we can say that there is also progress and the proposal was uh, presented to the Council of Ministers in January and it was approved. Uh, uh, that is entirely in line with the European directive so that we are waiting for our parliament to approve the definition for renewable energy community all these uh, small steps in the field of legal issues of course there are opportunities in the field of financing there are possibilities in the field of financing to procedures uh, uh, were opened um, in the this year uh, under the national recovery and resilience plan it, uh, financing was available and is available for small and medium enterprises as well as for households if they want to uh, install power, um, photovoltaics for production of electricity for uh, but again only for own use for own consumption 
uh, a good, I can give a rather interesting good example of, uh, in the field of uh, um, support of uh, renewables. Uh, yeah, so uh, see this project was implemented in two cities that are members of the government of Mayas in the city of Burgas and the city of Sofia. Uh, the, it was a rather interesting project because it developed a, a digital platform giving a lot of information on the PVs that can be installed on uh, buildings and uh, what electricity, what uh, how much energy they can potentially generate, uh, how, uh, what are the costs of such an investment uh, and how long it takes for the return of the, such an investment. Here you see the results of uh, this um, analysis of this uh, project uh, with a specialized uh, software with a um, drone uh, and with a 3D in 3D dimension uh, analysis was provided of the roofs of the buildings in two districts of uh, Sofia. This is the picture of Sofia with the districts that you see on the map and in the city of uh, Burgas uh, where you see here, the, uh, the buildings that are um, that you see in, in uh, blue. Uh, the interesting thing is that uh, a person can open directly, can uh, select a building and uh, receive a picture of the building with the uh, um, assessed uh, PV panels with the assessment of the annual production of electricity. And even a ready-made project uh, can be downloaded so that uh, the, build, the building owners can directly uh, find an investor and, and implement their project. This is, a, a, I would rather say, a, a first step uh, for the development of the energy communities in Bulgaria. In addition, uh, some steps have been taken and so, uh, municipalities have already opened some offices in the field of energy. So this is the case in Burgas and in the case of Sofia, one of the regions also of Sofia has opened such an office. All this is, uh, uh, having all this in mind, we can speak now about life back and which upgrade uh, uh, all our, these activities is a step of uh, to further development of the, uh, the renewables and the energy communities. Uh, take up in Bulgaria. So, uh, at our, under the project, we uh, plan to uh, create our technical assistance office, which will be uh, created uh, function at the premises of uh, our agency. Uh, it will be based uh, on the, uh, another uh, uh, energy poverty office that was already created and is functioning under the power core project that is uh, that will be finalized this year and on the horizon program and uh, it, we follow the model facilitation model uh, for uh, an office that will provide mainly free of charge services for the for the interested parties you see uh, the idea um, of our um, uh, technical assistance offices to provide support to the energy communities, mainly in the smaller municipalities of the Greater Sofia metropolitan area. You see it here on the map. Uh, of course, uh, uh, I will not go into details. It, the technical assistance office will provide the integrated services already mentioned uh, during the first presentation about the project and uh, we'll use all resources of the live bacon uh, project, the one-stop shop platform. Uh, we'll uh, use the, uh, the databases that will be created uh, using uh, the two forms, uh, train, train the trainer approach. We'll prepare a list of trainers ready to uh, provide training to the municipalities in the field. So we'll develop a capacity building program and we'll try to train over 150 municipality employees and other interested parties. Uh, so uh, at the end for the replication of the whole procedure, we'll select uh, 25 projects uh, all over the country. This is our idea through an open call and application procedures. And we'll, uh, uh, Support at least 10 projects uh, in the field to prepare their energy community, to set up an energy community, but only one will be 
support it entirely to, uh, to implement such an energy community and to serve as a model, as a demo site for the other municipalities as well. So as a, as a result, we uh, hope that uh, we can really uh, use the model of the technical systems offices in uh, the cities because uh, uh, with, uh, the technical systems uh, office of Sofana can be replicated in the other cities and municipalities. And uh, as uh, uh, so government of mayor supporter, Sofana will continue to encourage the public authorities and the citizen associations in the initiatives in the field of sustainable energy. Thank you very much for your attention. So thank you so much. Thank, thank, thank you so much. Now, yeah, it was really interesting to see all your efforts you are putting in, in your area. So now we are moving from Bulgaria to Denmark. And Eric, it's my pleasure to give you the floor. And I will look forward to hearing about the situation in Denmark and Copenhagen. Eric, you can share your presentation, please. OK, thank you so much, uh, Nadia. I need you to stop sharing your screen. Yeah. Okay, good. And let's see. Here we go. And do I know open to a slideshow? Is this open as a slideshow that you see the first slide now? We see the first slide, but in, not in the in the slideshow mode. But I think that you, you can go on like this; it's visible. Correct, you know. Uh, just a second. Um, oh, I should change. Okay, stop sharing and start again. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay now. That's, that's better. Just a Wonderful. brief interlude in Danish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So thank you so much. Uh, I'm Erik Halsker of the city of Copenhagen, working in the technical and environmental administration. And I'm here together with my colleague, Eustein Leonardsen. And uh, I'm going to take you through a brief presentation uh, involving just very briefly the context of the, the energy system of Copenhagen, the challenges to energy communities in Copenhagen, the local perspective, who say the potential or the promise of energy communities here, uh, and closing up with some concrete initiatives that we have uh, at city level that will support this development and some early examples. And this should fit into 10 minutes or slightly less. Uh, if you're moving the presentation, we cannot see it, Eric. No, I'm yeah, fine. okay, okay. Now I succeeded in moving the presentation. This is very good. So in 2009, Copenhagen adopts its first climate plan, and uh, Copenhagen also becomes a member of the Covenant of Mayors at the at the time, uh, which involves uh, developing a strategy for lowering the energy consumption of the city, monitor monitoring our greenhouse gas emissions, and mobilizing civic society to be part in this effort. The climate strategy uh, adopted in 2012, um, it targets carbon neutrality through four pillars, the, the energy consumption of the city, the energy production, mobility and city administration in it, initiatives. Uh, in particular, uh, it's concerned with municipal buildings, waste recycling, district heating, and, and combined heat and power from waste, wind turbines, and biomass, uh, as well in recent years, uh, further support for electric cars, uh, uh, dec decreasing the distance driven 
in, in the city by decreasing parking space and lowering speed inside city limits uh, and green procurement. This was just to give you an impression of the bouquets of bouquet of initiatives that we're working on at city level. The current understanding of the uh, energy system of Copenhagen uh, involves a lot of different uh, renewable energy technologies. It's uh, linked onto uh, uh, waste, waste incineration, as you can see in the lower left corner of this illustration, and the use of sustainable biomass as well as input of solar and wind power electricity um, from insta installations that are outside the city borders. All of this is then imported to the city. Um, so as such, there is a focus on energy production and energy consumption at the moment uh, that are quite separate from each other meaning there is a production side to the city and there is a consumption side. Uh, and only uh, quite recently, that's in the last two, three years, there's been an increasing attention uh, towards looking at uh, flexibility, uh, um, uh, uh, flexibility towards consumption of both, both electricity and, and heat district heating, and also towards uh, local photovoltaic uh, production so that we have active consumers uh, in the city. And we could say the outset for something like uh, energy communities. But at the moment, uh, we still see the city very much as divided in a, in a, a production side and a, a consumption side that are addressed separately. So uh, the challenges to energy communities at the moment uh, is that uh, we have uh, public utility companies and, and they are in principle user owned and they are cooperative in their structure. But at, uh, at a size uh, level, they're all, all almost national in scale and they uh, don't behave as uh, cooperatives, but rather as corporate organizations that are struggling to protect their market shares. So in principle, just as uh, uh, a private company. Uh, at the same time, these uh, companies, these uh, cooperatives have been rather successful in establishing an energy system, both with regards to heat and to electricity, where there's a high degree of energy security and a relatively low, comparatively low uh, uh, price to, to energy in Denmark and even to the more remote regions uh, of Denmark. And in this, there is uh, somewhat the dilemma of the urban versus the rural, which is, is I think, is quite typical of, of uh, many, many places in Europe today. And, and um, we need to consider to what extent we should allow the more well-organized, well-performing elements of the existing system to withdraw and, and work as isolated islands at the expense of other elements of the systems, uh, more rural areas uh, where it will be more expensive to maintain uh, individual energy systems. So there is a, a, a question of solidarity also with regards to this. So I should say these, our utility companies, they, as they're working as cooperatives, they're working in a non-profit uh, uh, situation. But at the same time, these companies have developed huge profits during the current energy crisis of the last winter. Uh, and, and these profits are at the moment kept inside the companies for further development, which is not quite sure to the public what that implies. Um, yes. Uh, and, and with regard to 
uh, protecting market shares. This implies also that that these companies they want to maintain users as individual entities with separate meters. Uh, and this is, of course, a, a barrier to establish energy communities and, and sharing energy as such. So this is uh, one barrier. And then just a, a meta perspective to this is how we understand electricity in Denmark. And now I'm running almost 50 years back to the energy crisis. At the time, Denmark was hugely energy, uh, oil dependent and all e electricity was uh, uh, based on generation from, from oil. Um, and and uh, to support a transition away from oil, uh, electricity was heavily taxed. Up through the 90s, the energy system gradually developed towards being more coal dependent. This didn't change the taxation system. Um, and in the current situation since the 2000, where we have more extensive uh, uh, wind-based renewable energy, um, uh, uh, electricity is still rather heavily taxed. So uh, offshore wind farms and rural uh, photovoltaic farms um, uh, um, still have to 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 uh, pay taxes for for supplying energy into the system um, and in general both electricity and, and energy in general is an important source of tax revenue and this is really a, a challenge to the green transition so eric uh, sorry for for sorry for interrupting can you ask Please to close the, the presentation like in two minutes so that Mauro from Avila will have time to, to present. We will go a bit um, a bit late, but just to give all people the, the, the possibility to present. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Andrea. Um, we will move on very closely. And I will actually move on from the regulatory challenges because they're not uh, that specific to Copenhagen. And I'll uh, point to what we see as the promises. We see the promise of energy community as a, a possibility for the citizens to participate in the green transition. We want to promote collective action. We want to promote citizens to be prosumers, so acti active participants. Uh, we want to maintain the city as a unit, and we don't want to develop isolated islands. We want to see energy communities as part of our urban renewal activities in general. And very, very basic, what we're doing now is to use this to promote further development of uh, photovoltaic rooftop solutions throughout the city. We're aiming at having a 3% target in 2025, and we have uh, various types of city grants uh, supporting this at the moment. We have some mapping initiatives. This is not a map. This is just a table just to show you uh, very much like the situation in Sofia. We have some ongoing building renewal initiatives where we are implementing this. And we have a consideration that we need to address this more at the citizen level, because otherwise we will only get institutional investors on board so, um, and um, let me say, let me say, or maybe I should just say very quickly. So we'll support this by, uh, will building renovation grants will be integrated into this demonstration project projects. Uh, we're moving on with experimenting with batteries in, in selected buildings and charging systems as well and as well also with sector coupling, which is interesting in related to the district heating system of Copenhagen, where we want to lower the temperature, which will be a challenge to older buildings. And now very quickly for the last 30 seconds, <laughs> we have four concrete examples of cases where uh, uh, groups of citizens are 
trying to establish energy communities within the regulatory and technical and economic uh, 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 framework that exists today. And we're working as uh, uh, city officials to help share experience and provide knowledge uh, to them also through the Beckham project. So this was a bit rush, rushed, everybody, but uh, please feel free to uh, return to me with particular questions regarding the Copenhagen case. Thank you. One, wonderful, fantastic. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. It's amazing to see how your commitment, it's really... Um, it's really concretizing with, with very interesting things. So, Mauro, please, now the floor is yours. You can present the, the example from the, the how the Deputacion de Avila is supporting okay. municipalities in your yes, area. Thank you. Eric, please. Thank you. Um, okay, I will share the, the screen now. Uh, there, I don't know if everybody can, can see it yes yes very well perfect perfect um yeah um i'm mauro and um, ostinelli i'm a uh, part of r2m the coordinator of of, of uh, the Beacon project and i'm here uh, in in the voice of sorry mauro of... we see we see a window in the middle of the screen oh, sorry, uh, sorry. No, the, no. Uh, um, yeah thank you yeah i am um, I'm um, in the I'm the voice of Diputacion of, of Avila that they weren't able to to join today. So uh, I will I will speak from from them. Um, well, uh, starting from the um, uh, Spain um, legal framework, we have um, several issues uh, regarding the, um, the legislation. Uh, first, we don't have um, like uh, we have only one uh, transposition of of the um, of the European uh, law uh, regarding the energy community definition, and we don't have a uh, specific um, uh, royal degree for the energy community. Uh, we um, have a lack of the of a register of the. Um, of the energy uh, of energy communities repository that they uh, register of energy communities that they can uh, um, apply for. Uh, we don't have them. Um, there is also uh, because of, of 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 the lack of legislation, we have also the lack of uh, standardization of uh, which are uh, energy communities and which aren't. Um, there are several. Um, administrative um, obstacles uh, regarding the, um, the self-consumption um, uh, PV plants. They have uh, uh, several uh, steps to get uh, that approved. And if you are an energy community, it's, uh, you have even more of obstacles. Um, also, there is no um, or very little uh, technical assistance from the authorities. Uh, that's something that Beckham wants to solve, uh, giving them uh, tools to to give this technical assistance, and also um, because of the innovative uh, uh, solution of the energy communities, there is a lack of of uh, uh, financing. Uh, well, in the Avila um, demo site, it's. Uh, at uh, that different of the other demo site is the uh, whole province. Um, there are 160,000 people in this province, 248 municipalities, so uh, we are uh, quite a lot. Um, and regarding the, um, the energy sector in, in Spain, the 70% of, um, of the energy comes from uh, renewable sources. But um, most of um, the, the, um, the energy comes from uh, uh, from the energy um, electricity sector, and not uh, in the in, in the transportation. The, the, this number is much lower. Um, 
when in, um, for the Avila um, demo site, we have um, um, we want to promote the um, the renewable energies in in giving them um, giving the the, the province uh, some some examples some uh, some use cases that we select on a tree of them uh, that they are the three of the municipalities are uh, inside the commandant of mayors and um, the first one is the Mediana de Voltoya that it's um it's a it's a rural um a, a rural uh, town uh el barco de avila that is um, a much uh, like a medium uh, city um and uh, sotillo de adrada that that is um it's a it's a, also a rural site but also with commerce uh, um, with the commerce uh, sector. In, inside uh, the, the live uh, Beckham, we want uh, we are going to develop a transition office that will be the um, uh, and something that the municipalities can go and, and ask for legal, financial, and technical information for the uh, energy communities. It's um, pr providing also this uh, in, in the in the framework of a one uh, a one stop shop, and um, also to promote the energy communities um, and renewable energy in general. Um, the, um, the the Agencia Provincial of Avila, that it's um, um, an agency uh, of energy, uh, that will provide also a uh, conferences. Uh, to promote the, the energy communities. And uh, in this um, in this way, um, we already uh, have a, had a, um, uh, a meeting with uh, more than 80 municipalities um, the last uh, in February. And we also discussed uh, which are the opportunities that will develop uh, or will give the energy communities to these um, uh, um, the energy communities to these municipalities, and we um, first we are uh, uh, focusing on municipalities, but then we will have this the same conferences uh, with with um, the citizens or 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 uh, private companies. Yeah, that's a very fast the presentation. Yeah. So we get can get to, to the agenda. <laughs> so wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mauro. And uh, yeah, uh, I'm sorry for cutting you, but we are already late, two minutes late. So I think that we have to come now to to close this webinar. So I really thank you all for these inspiring uh, experiences for um, for this inspiring session. Uh, we believe it will be really valuable for the Covenant of Mayor Signatories. We are just about to start the journey on developing energy community and running energy communities locally to really know and get some insights from 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 runners, local authorities like you. Uh, many thanks also to to our wonderful audience for their questions. Of course, uh, if they have uh, if you have questions, feel free to 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 write now here in the chat or maybe just to write an email to to the contacts that i'm sharing or to reach directly the the speakers i remember that the this webinar is being recorded so will be available on covenant of mayors library together with all the the presentation and uh, of course a, a very big thank you to all our excellent panelists and uh, yes uh, I wish you a great day and looking forward to see you in the next Covenant of Mayors and Life Back on future events. Uh, I really um, suggest you to, to, um, to have a look on the Life Back on and Covenant of Mayors next activities. And uh, yeah, so thank you very much and uh, enjoy the spring. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, bye.